Hello there and welcome to part two of my tier list for the cornerstones in Against the Storm. In this video I'm going to rate the second half of this list with points ranging from 1 to 5 for all these cornerstones, where a 1 means that this cornerstone is hardly usable in a general purpose and is only useful in very very specific scenarios, and a 5 out of 5 stands for this is so good that it will work in practically every city, and unless you have a really good reason not to pick it, it will be really really the best choice in most scenarios. There has been a blanket vote for a couple of cornerstones in the previous video, ranging from these uh, I went all over all these production increasers that just go for a different good. So if you want to know the scores for these, you have to go back to the previous video if you haven't watched that already. I'm just going over those that I haven't rated previously in part one. Now let's get started finally. Improvised tools received a three out of five for me. It was a hard one for me, personally see it also as a candidate of a 4 out of 5, but I went down to a 3 out of 5 because it becomes nighly unusable in many situations, namely when the storm has any form of punishment for discovering glades during storms. Uh, that is a very common one and occurs quite often. But if not, it is a power tool that gives you free tools for just a good timing and it's really really not that bad. I banked off another point because it's pretty useless if you draw it too late so that's why it stands at 3 out of 5 but if you pull it as one of the very very first ones that's really powerful and can make a really successful run. So these were all handled in the previous episode. We're moving over to Lost in the Wilds which receives a 2 out of 5 from me. A villager per glade is not, nothing bad at all. It's also a very controllable influx of extra uh, villages, but most of the time something else will be better. You'll be not winning a game only because you get extra villagers, and it is also really, really performing bad the later you draw it into the game. Therefore, it's even a candidate close to a 1 out of 5. I gave it a 2 out of 5 because it is at least useful and easy to control, unlike other cornerstones that I like even less. Lost Supplies. I gave that one a 3.5 out of 5 with a tendency to a 4 out of 5, simply because completing danger and forbidden glade events is something you ought to do anyways, and you get a big reward for every one of those. So I really, really, really like that, as food is never a bad supply to have. You will be always happy about it, and it is very generous. 40-40 is a lot. So, Lumbertex, previous video, market shift plan. So, here it is a, uh, a an odd one. So, I ranked this with a 2 out of 5, with a tendency to a 4 out of 5. So, this is a 2 out of 5 in pretty much every scenario, because it's really cool to have more trade routes, but no traders until you have at least five of them completed can be really hard. But for a trade route city, it is a four out of five as plus two trade routes is amazing as it will give you so many more options to earn your money. That's really powerful. But then again, if you don't have the factions unlocked, if you haven't had many cities in a cycle, it's again quite bad. That's why it's uh, fluctuating so wildly between the points because it's really, really a wild card that is always a little bit different. Master Blueprint. I range this this thing scores differently on the timing entirely. It gives you basically access to all of the uh, big camps. You don't need to draft them anymore. But as a downside, you gather much slower until you have gathered 300 resource nodes. So it's a clear 4 out of 5 with a tendency to 5 out of 5 if you pull it uh, really early, as it's really good. And a 1 out of 5 if you pull it late, as you will not really be needing this anymore. It's a double-edged sword, can be really cool, but you really need to be able to grind down that penalty. Otherwise, it's more of a burden than a benefit. So, meat specialization has been already covered in the previous video. Here's the metallurgic proficiency. So, this is again one where I have a range of a score because I had a hard time giving it a generalistic score. So, 
It is a four out of five if you have anything metal producing in your city and a two out of five if you don't go for that way entirely. That's just hard to give it a, it's a three out of five if you want to put it somewhere in between, but it's so impactful if you have any metal industry and so useless if you don't that I, I was in between. Mist piercers. So these guys are four out of five in lower difficulties, two out of five in the higher difficulties. This is because it's really good to be able to see what's inside the glades, but impatience is a currency that is really, really hard to pay in higher prestige runs. Whereas in lower prestige runs, Miss Pierces was amazing. I just wasn't able to play it anymore once the difficulty levels got higher because the impatience penalty just killed me. But before that, it's really good. It's really, really good. So, Moss Broccoli Seeds. I gave that a two out of five. It can be quite useless uh, in most situations, but if you happen to have greenhouses, it's good. And that's just it. I didn't like it too much. Same went for the mushroom seedlings with a 2.5 out of 5 because it's at least working on farms, but it's only working on drizzle season, so it's also pretty much a 2 out of 5. Not too impressive. Not too impressive at all. Obsidian runestone. It's a 3 out of 5, as I love everything that makes my hearth resilient against corruption. And this thing is really big. Can be easily a 4 out of 5 if you happen to run a rain punk heavy build, as this will help you a lot and not losing people when you're running a lot of corruption. The old fedora hat is a clear 4 out of 5, with a tendency even to a 5 out of 5, as the chance of getting a double reward out of a glade event is massive. It's just been not that good if you are already deep down in a run when you don't have that many glade events anymore to clear but all in all it is just massive keep in mind that it refers here to glade events in general so it's not only the danger glade events it's all of the glade events therefore it's a real powerhouse it's only banking off one point as it can come at the wrong time so over diligent woodworkers i've been covering that in the previous episode as well so let's move over to over exploitation. This was to me personally a four out of five as it is really powerful if you pull it early on because the hostility is really cheap, but it is a clear lowering point scale the later you pull it as it has to be newly discovered resource nodes. But the amount of charges you gain is really high and 10 hostility ain't much for that kind of reward so depending on your play style it could be easily only or uh, also only a three out of five but i consider it really powerful as it gives you a lot of longevity in your resource nodes peasant supplies so this is easily a four out of five and a five out of five for a trade city as packs of provisions come in super handy, in case you don't use them, just sell them. They are really valuable, you will always get new villages. So this comes with a massive benefit, as it is just money if you don't want to go trade routes, and it is even more money if you want to go and transform it alongside the trade routes. It's a really good cornerstone. Prayer book. That one is a clear 5 out of 5. It is one of those that becomes more powerful, the higher the difficulty levels, and faster scouts is just less threat from all of the dangerous events, and that is just making the game so much easier because you get the ability to just tackle them more willingly. And a multitude of halves is always something, I feel like two halves are the are the utmost minimum. I always play with three halves in my runs, and therefore this can easily be a 10 to 30 percent speed increase for all of your blade event speeds. That's that's just pick it up. It's really good. So prosperous archaeology is a four out of five for me because every game has abandoned caches and you get to open or send them back, and you just gain resolve. So it's basically just an added bonus on top of your um, caches. The only th reason why I'm banking off a point is it, it doesn't act retroactively, so you, if you have already opened up uh, caches, I think it doesn't work. Let me know if I'm wrong, though. 
So Prosperous Settlement is a 4 out of 5 because if you do trade, you will gain global resolve out of that. The only reason to not gain global resolve out of that is not to do trade. That happens sometimes, and that is the only reason why it's not a 5 out of 5. Protected trade is again a 4 out of 5 for me, as it is here one of those wonderful things that just gives you a hostility reduction when you do trading. Again, just no 5 out of 5 because trading is not always happening, but it is really, really powerful once you start stacking it. It is maybe just a 3 out of 5 as the hostility reduction is quite low and the amount of goods you need to sell. I'm personally just a very, very, um, I'm, I'm, I love trade strategies, therefore I value this a lot. Maybe I'm overvaluing the impact here a little bit. Choose for yourself. It's either a 3 out of 5 or a 4 out of 5. Queen's Gift is, to me, a 3 out of 5, as it is increasing the hearth's resistance again for woodcutters. I give it only a 3 out of 5, because the resistance comes to play during Storm, and Storm is typically the season where you cannot employ all the woodcutters that you want to employ. Yeah, so there is there is a catch behind it. If it wouldn't be for that, it would be easily better, but the extra resistance to your hearth is really powerful. So, rain pumps, we covered that in the previous episode. Rebellious spirit. So, you gain global resolve for impatience, and I gave that a 4 out of 5, only because it penalizes you harder for losing people. But apart from that, the extra global resolve for impatience is massive. It's been so massive that this thing got even nerfed already in the past because it was just too powerful. Once you can pull that, just let your impatience meter run full and enjoy free resolve and handle it accordingly though. Don't, don't kill yourself accidentally. Reckless Plunder is a 2 out of 5 for me, as it is really cool to get twice as many abandoned cash resources, but the penalty for all the other resource nodes is quite heavy. Reckless Plunder can be, though, a 4 out of 5, or 5 out of 5 even, if you happen to pull it at the end of a game, where you are not exploring as much anymore, and you're basically just considering where you're getting your victory points together. Reckless Plunder makes cash even more reliably powerful. So that's a pretty good one. So Reinforced Axes, I gave that one a 5 out of 5. As it is just, wood is life, my friends, wood is life. And faster woodcutters are never a bad thing. And unless you have something that totally plays into your strategy, this thing is always good, as I haven't played a single colony that hadn't had a lot of wood to cut. So it's just really, really good. I'm just, I was basically biased to give it only a 4.5 out of 5 because it ain't that powerful. But then I thought about it, nah, it's just a good one. Let's leave it like that. Rich Glades is here again a range of 4 out of 5 at the beginning of the game to 1 out of 5 at the end of the game. I rank it quite high as it comes with no downsides. I don't give it a 5 out of 5 early on as it is not powerful enough for that. So, root delivery line was last episode. Rudy Ground is a 4 out of 5 with a bias to 5 out of 5 if you don't happen to have any farms. The plus 1 wood production is amazing as wood is like I said, a very versatile and important resource. And even if you have farms running, it might be considerable to pick that up because there's many ways to speed up the production of your farms. And plus one wood, like I said, you really, really do notice that. Royal Guard Training received a 3 out of 5 from me. It is really cool to have a plus 5 extra resource for brawling, but I banked off two points for the fact that one point fell off to the uh, fact that you need the building and the resource. And another point, not every species loves brawling. So it's cool if you have two species that love brawling and you have everything running, then it is amazing. But apart from that, it can really disappoint a bit. Safe Haven is another 5 out of 5 as you want to upgrade your hearths anyways. The only reason why I would bank a point would be if you're not unlocked uh, if you haven't unlocked the neighborhood level yet then it is uh, entirely useless but apart from that i want to put it into numbers 40 hostility is almost an entire year of hostility 
you gain 45 hostility per year. So every hearth almost turns back the clock by an entire year once you have that cornerstone. That's just, wow. That you get that for something you'd be most likely doing anyways. That's why I give it a five out of five. So Hilda's secret cookbook. A four out of five if you happen to produce pie, a two out of five if you don't. So this is one of the things super hit or miss, therefore let's even it out at a three out of five because it is super stupidly powerful when you can use it. Secure perimeter. I gave that one a five out of five. As it is here again, lowering the hostility for something you will be doing anyways. It is not super powerful. I was on the verge of giving it only a four out of five because it is not powerful enough. But when I realized that you basically just receive less penalty for your standard behavior in the game, I considered it a five out of five again, because it's always good. There's never something bad about it. There's just better options at some points, but that's for me a five out of five. Secure Trail received a 3.5 out of 5 as, well, it is, for one, cool to have the newcomers quicker, as you don't need to pick them up when you want to, but I am always a little bit, well, bound when it comes down to, um, or I'm a little bit uh, skeptical when it comes down to population growth. But this makes you faster, and faster is good. Therefore, a higher point rating than I usually give to extra colony um, population boosters. So, Sharp Sickles was already covered. Silent Looting, a 4 out of 5, as the Abandoned Cache Opening yields Hostility Lowering. Here again, super powerful, only banked off a point because it's not retroactive, and it is not always therefore as useful as you want it to be but it is really really it. one of my fav favorites in many many regards small press last episode stuff smuggler's visit a four out of five to a five out of five depending on your situation you can just pick up whatever you want it's the only downside is that you don't get a passive bonus like you would regularly do but depending on your situation this can be sometimes a real godsend Spices, uh, that's another one that we already kind of like covered. Steel, Maddox, well, this is one of those where I just feel like that's a clear 2.5 out of 5 because it's so situational. I don't know what to think about these steel pickaxes, we already had that. Stormwalk attack, so we gain every time a newcomer group comes up 15 amber but we'll lose all amber. So I gave that a four out of five as it is super powerful when you get it early on, but it drops off in effectivity, in effectivity the longer a game goes. So it has a bias to fall off later. But apart from that, unless you have already a stupid amount of money banked, it is always good in my experience, as you will be picking up newcomers anyways. Stormwalker Training. I have given this a 4 out of 5, as it is just powerful for trade route gameplay in general. I banked off a point because you don't always play with trade routes, but that's the only reason why not. It's just super good if you do, though. Surprise Child is a 1 out of 5. It is in most situations a horrible idea to just gain lizards whenever you do egg breeding. It can be really good in certain situations, like for example when you're not penalized for killing off people, but most of the time this will get you more in trouble than anything else, or it won't do anything, so off with that. Survivor Bonding. I gave that one a 4.5 out of 5. Not a 5 out of 5 because it ain't powerful enough. But apart from that, faster, people, happier people, just good. Just good stuff. Only banked off half a point because the the values are just a tad bit low. Tanning racks was last episode's business. Titan belts. So I gave that one a 3 out of 5. It lowers the trade uh, cost of the, the travel costs of trade routes, but that's pretty much it. It ain't as impressive as all the others. It doesn't change your effectiveness so badly. It's just really good if you want to send off really large trade routes. And that's why I gave it only a 3 out of 5, as it's much more specialized than the previous ones. Trade Hub. So we gain reputation whenever we sell stuff. 
worth 60 amber, but we slow our reputation gain from resolve. So I gave that one a 4 out of 5 if you are playing trade, a 1 out of 5 if you have interest in resolving the game via people's happiness. It's basically you opting into a economic victory if you go for it. But if you stack it up with all the other cornerstones that give you something when you sell stuff, this can be just the little thing that sets you off into an amazing game. Trade locks, a 4 out of 5, as it is just powerful in any regard. An active trade route slot is super rare, super hard to come by, and super powerful if you play trade routes. And uh, traders arriving quicker gives you more options to do things, therefore just outright useful. Just a 4 out of 5 because you cannot trade always. Trade negotiations received a 3.5 out of 5, as it is only a small increase but it is powerful i was nudged towards the 0.5 here because it makes the small trade routes much more lucrative which is really really good so trading grounds i gave a 1.5 out of 5 as it requires lizards it requires training gear and it only gives one point of resolve for seven production cycles yeah, can be quite useful, but it's very, very situational in my experience. It never changed the game for me, and I tried it several times. Travel rations, a 2 out of 5. As it is quite useful-ish, but there are almost always things that will increase your effectiveness more than just that. Urban planning, I gave that one a 2 out of 5, as... Housing space is cool and all, but 10 trade routes are a lot to do. And most of the time, you don't need it that badly, and you won't be doing that many trade routes. But if you do, it's actually really good. That's why I left a 2 out of 5 on it, as trade routes are really powerful. Now, so I need to get to my next note. And value added tax. I gave that one a 2 out of 5. It is cool if you have trade goods, but trade goods are the together with luxury goods packs rather hard to produce and very specific therefore. But if you are in the situation where you actually get to produce these, it's really good as they are already valuable. And 25% more, you really notice that. That is last episode's business. Oh no, no, that's actually, no, that's the same as the um, training grounds one. It's a 1.5 out of 5 here again. It's just beavers, it's just wine, it's very limited, can be good, but most of the time it ain't. Well-rested workers, I gave that a 2.5 out of 5, as it is stupidly powerful if you happen to fulfill it, seriously. 25% chance of double yield is a lot, but here again, we need leisure fulfillment for that and it's only for people that can fulfill leisure therefore hard to fulfill maybe more three out of five but i found these quite hard without restrictions received a four out of five from me it is bad to have no consumption control yes but having a chance of double yield everywhere is powerful i have tried it out several times and what can i say i never have regretted it a single time. I still have to see the game where it is, has been a bad choice. I gave it just a 4 out of 5, as it is, objectively speaking, quite a heavy drawback to have the contr uh, consumption control disabled. Only because it didn't kill my games yet doesn't mean it can't. So that is something that I want to point out here. Woodcutter's Prayer. I gave that one a 5 out of 5 with a tendency to a 3 out of 5, depending on your situation. If it comes down early, it's a clear 5 out of 5, as you will really be okay with losing your fuel for a moment, as you will have a stupidly high wood production afterwards. And a 3 out of 5 if it comes very late, when you have already stored several things like sea marrow and whatnot. But even then, it can be still very, very good. This woodcutter sprayer is only bad for you if you have too much fuel already stored that you cannot afford losing. Apart from that, it's just really, really powerful. Woodcutter's Song, I gave that one a 4 out of 5, as we are will we will be always felling trees at the end of the day. Only seal maps uh, do restrict you severely in that behavior. So I felt like this is just 
amazing. Free resolve is always good and that's what it provides. The downside why I had to bank a point is you have to chop trees and it only lasts for a short amount of time so you can't really rely on it but it can be good for bursts of resolve. So the work safety guide is well I have my trouble with that I see it very similar with the well-rested workers, just a little bit worse than that. So I'd say it is again a 1.5 out of 5, as it is quite a powerful bonus, but it's very crippling specific and I, I haven't get it uh, to a really good use ever. And last but not least, Zork's secret ingredient. It's one of these things, if you happen to produce pickled goods, it's amazing. Anywhere else, it's stupidly bad. So, a 2 out of 5 from me. Okay, my friends, so that's been that. I really hope you enjoyed this list and found it helpful. Feel free to leave me your comments down below. As I said in the entry of that video, it's my opinion. I hope you found it helpful. I'm open for discussions. I'm always happy to learn something new. So... Keep the discussion civil though, that's the only thing I'd wish for. A thumbs up would be appreciated, subscription would be totally nice, and in the description box you will have links to Discord, Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. Discord is cool if you want to hang out with me or like-minded gamers, and the other links are amazing for supporting the channel. With a big, big thanks to all of you who already did or do, I deeply appreciate and I also do appreciate you watching this video even after my personal ad rolls. You're still obviously hanging around and I'm appreciating that. So have a wonderful day and see you soon.